Thank you very much, Andy, and thank you to everybody for coming here today. Um, I will just uh, start off the event today with giving us some pointers as to where we have come from in terms of this political economy agenda, where we are at at the moment, and where we probably need to be heading in order to improve, let's say, uptake and the um, effectiveness of development um, um, efforts. And I just want to pick up to start with some of the points that Andy was making at the beginning, uh, which is that over the past 10 years or so, uh, with the FID as, as one of the pioneers on this, there has been a lot of thinking uh, within the international donor community about how to take politics seriously in the work that they do. Um, and it's also almost a year to the day today that uh, the politics and governance group here at ODI hosted a dialogue on putting politics into practice. And from, from this sort of 10-year look, and again from, from the, the one-year anniversary of, of this dialogue that we uh, congregated, there are two things that I think emerge very strongly as to where, where we have come from. Firstly, uh, which is something that Andy uh, said, politics matter, and I think this is important because there's growing awareness that development, uh, development is not a technical exercise, but rather a heavily political process. And also, and I think this might be more contested, but I think there's growing awareness that the good governance agenda is not good enough um, uh, in terms of an answer to developmental challenges. And I think political economy analysis has been a very powerful tool in helping to crystallize this. Um, and I think this is a point that comes very clearly across in a lot of the articles that are included in the DAI journal that we're launching today. Um, I think it's also fair to say that over the past 10 years, and again with the FID being uh, one of the pioneers on this, and there has been a growing number of actors and institutions in the development community, um, ranging from bilaterals but also multilaterals like the World Bank and now more recently the EC, and um, even now uh, members of the NGO community that have begun to use political economy analysis in their work. Um, and there has been sort of an evolution as well as to the kind of political uh, economy analysis that is being used, starting very broadly with sort of macro level analyses, um, looking at country processes, um, and now moving a little bit more towards sectoral uh, level analyses and also uh, problem driven analysis. So this has been sort of the shifting way that PEA has gone. But I, again, I think and this is something that um, Andy has, has uh, already pointed out, um, there remains a big question as to whether and how this increasing interest in political economy analysis in the donor community has made a difference, and what kind of difference it has made. And there's a, there's a feeling that there's still very little systematic or rigorous evidence of impact. And this is something that uh, we also here at ODI are struggling with. However, I would like to suggest, and this I will whiz through very rapidly based on uh, some of the contributions in the journal, but also ongoing ODI work and some of the work that we know about from, from the donor community. I would like to highlight five areas where I think political economy analysis has begun to make a difference or at least shows the potential mm -hmm. to, to be moving in that direction, although again, um, the evidence might be very limited and, and uh, case-based. But firstly, I think PA has been very important in providing a different perspective uh, to look at an issue or a challenge um, that can help to confront preconceived notions or assumptions about how change happens. And this has helped to move away from normative assumptions um, about how, how change happens towards perhaps more pragmatic and the strategic approaches uh, that are much more grounded on the contextual realities and seem more feasible. Um, there are some examples of, this, uh, of these insights, for example, in the need to engage not only with formal institutions of the state, but also with informal institutions and actors within the state and outside. And I think this is an important insight. Um, there have also been um, important instance about the need to problematize uh, some of the conventional approaches to things like accountability, especially, for example, in terms of what is expected to be able to happen from the bottom up 
um, if there's not an adequate top-down effort that, that is accompanying such processes. So I think political economy analysis has helped to crystallize some of these, um, some of these challenges. Related to this, a second contribution that I think comes across through P, P, uh, PEA is that there is a potential to inform better and more realistic policy formulation and programming. Um, firstly, in terms of showing areas where donors should really not go um, and do no harm being one of the main principles there, but also perhaps in uh, changing the approach a little bit to make it more compatible with local realities. And I think here, um, the I want to give an example, but also qualify it very heavily, which is the, tr the strategic governance and uh, corruption assessments that the Dutch government pi pioneered across the different countries where it provides assistance. Um, this was a very ambitious effort, I would say, um, that involved all of the embassies where they were working on um, in terms of development assistance. Uh, but in the case of Uganda in particular, the exercise actually led to a rethinking of what the kind of approach that the Dutch were taking um, in the country um, and to refine the, the way that it was providing budget support toward moving from a general budget support approach to a much more sectoral um, uh, approach to budget support. So that has been important in that sense. Another important um, <laughs> contribution that I think the PEA has made is it, it, it's a very useful tool to help systematize knowledge of a particular country or sector in one handy way and that is readily available and accessible all in one go. Um, some of the things that have come up again and again from experience, um, both from ourselves and from others, is that a lot of the information material that goes into this uh, political economy analysis that, that are done at the country level or at the sectoral level or at the problem-driven level, um, this is not necessarily new information, but it has been brought together in a coherent fashion. Um, and this actually itself helps very much in terms of promoting a better basis for engagement and dialogue between donors and uh, recipient, go uh, recipient governments and recipient <coughs> partners based on a shared understanding of what the challenges um, and, and opportunities are at hand. So um, this is also important. I think there's some very use useful examples of this in the DAI, DAI journal and also this GACA exercise that I was telling you about mm -hmm. has been very important in this respect. Uh, PEA can also be very helpful in terms of, of um, helping to identify a broader set of st stakeholders who might be in favor of reforms if you only look hard enough. Um, donors tend to come into a country or, or, a, or a sector thinking uh, that they need to engage with X actor but may not necessarily have uh, awareness of, of other sets of actors that are less traditional or less commonly engaged with. And PEA has at least the potential of providing um, a methodology to try to identify who those potential stakeholders are to create uh, broader coalitions for change. Um, and lastly, I think um, PEA can be a very instrumental tool in helping to identify entry points where donors can act not only as providers of funds, which is obviously something that they have to do, but also more crucially and critically as facilitators, mediators, or brokers to build trust among different actors and help tackle blockages to reform and, and, and facilitate reform processes. This obviously builds on the point I was making above, um, but in this way donors themselves can come to exercise a role that is much more that of facilitating processes of change in country. And um, I don't want to get too much in the detail of this, but there's a very good example of this kind of um, um, role for, for political economy analysis from a case study that uh, David Booth from ODI uh, carried out with Fred uh, Koluba Mutedi on the possibilities for change and reform in the Uganda road sector. And the recommendation was that DFID had a window of opportunity to promote reform <coughs> against the odds in a way, but only if it was willing to play this facilitating role. So I, these are five areas where I think uh, PEA has made a, a difference or has made a, or has a potential to make a contribution, mm -hmm. uh, but again, it's a limited set of examples, you know, that are highly uh, individualized, and I think the challenge to provide systematic evidence remains. Now, I just wanted to think a little bit um, about where 
this takes us in terms of the future of political economy analysis to improve uptake and ultimately developmental outcomes. Um, and I think the first thing to say, and this, this always comes in handy <laughs> anytime we come up with any kind of tool or idea, is that political economy analysis is a tool and it's not a magic bullet. So uh, one has to use it thinking that it will not solve you know, deeply entrenched problems, but may perhaps provide an angle to, to, through which to address them. With that caveat in mind, though, I think um, recent experience from work carried out at ODI, including this Uganda <coughs> roads work, and also some work that uh, a colleague of mine at, o at the Politics and, and Governance Group is doing on water and sanitation with also DFID, is pointing to the fact that applied political economy analysis tends to be most useful and most suitable for practical uptake. Um, if it's done at the problem, uh, level, at the problem-driven level, uh, regardless of whether it is it's sectoral or, or more macro. But in any case, sectoral level political economy analysis also promises to be uh, quite, uh, to lend itself quite well to, to take up. Um, but these examples um, of work that ODI has been doing on political economy analysis, including the Uganda Roads work, but also this work on water and sanitation, also help to highlight that for PEA to be useful, it has to be part of a much longer and larger process of engagement at the country level that has to start with um, a clear of under, uh, understanding with the local office of why certain analysis is going to be taking place and what the purpose of that analysis is, and to bring in um, the necessary people at the country level within the um, donor office to, to make it meaningful and helpful to them. Then obviously to identify the problem very clearly, then you do the analysis itself, and then you have to have some kind of follow-up uh, so as not to just drop the towel when the analysis is done, but give it continuity through uptake and, and evaluation. Um, I think this particular a idea of the political economy analysis as being a multi-stage process highlights one of the key things here in terms of being able to make it substantial and meaningful, which is the kinds of people at the country level who need to engage with this in the country offices and the kinds of skills and interests and approaches that they bring <laughs> to the table for them to actually see it as useful to, to the work that they do. And I just briefly wanted to share um, an experience that I had when I was doing those GACAs for both Colombia and Guatemala for the Dutch. I had two radically different experiences based very much on the staff on the ground in each one of them. One of them was the person in charge of the exercise was completely opposed to any kind of idea of, of the use of political analysis in any way political economy analysis in any way, and therefore the process was much harder than it should have been. Uh, whereas in the other one, the person was on board all along and was thrilled to have this kind of opportunity to rethink about uh, their, the program that they were implementing and have a fresh perspective on it. And it went much further and it had much greater impact. Um, and I think in this in this sense of the skills, sorry, <laughs> the skills of um, of the kinds of of people that are, that are required to be able to do this work well and to see the value of it, um, is something that ODI and policy practice actually have picked up on, and um, Alex Duncan here and David Booth have become our pioneers doing some of this uh, political economy training uh, for different uh, agencies, and also within our team, we're doing much more of that. So this is a an important thing uh, that we're working on. Um, I also just wanted to pick up on one of the things in terms of evaluation and value for money, because political economy analysis, one political economy analysis can seem daunting because there's that perception that it just sort of brings you a really horrible picture of all the things you can't do and how mm -hmm. difficult it is and how prolong, uh, protracted or long-term it is. But in reality, it is also a very useful tool to help to develop theories of change that are realistic and feasible. And so if you capitalize on that, political economy actually offers a great way to be able to focus on, on the results agenda in a way that may not be entirely opposed to what the, the, the current conditions are imposing. Um, and I think one of the things that has come up from the work that we have been doing is that sometimes donors 
have very elaborate <laughs> and very ambitious theories of change that sort of let go of much smaller changes that may happen at an intermediate or even micro level. Uh, but if you focus on the political economy, you may rescue them. And I think, for example, I was doing some very interesting work in Liberia looking at centers of government. And one of the things that we discovered there is that if you focus on very little things like freeing up the time that the president has to focus on priorities, that can have a tremendous impact on what she can deliver or the president can deliver for the people. And, and it's a small thing, but it has a great catalyzing effect. So in that respect, the political economy sh um, angle can help with the results agenda. And then finally, the last point uh, that I wanted to say is that th there's also a great need to educate the public in donor countries about this, the need to understand development as a political process <coughs> and to embrace this sort of political way of understanding what is happening so that they can it sort of perhaps reflect on uh, not demanding results as quickly or um, as, as they might otherwise. So I think this process of educating the audience in donor countries is also very important. 